taking down your values, you're on your way. The next step is to convert your dream into goals. So you've got your vision board and you know what your values are and now you're on your way. You're going to turn those dreams into goals and then your goals into action plans. What have you got to do today? What's the one thing you got to do today to get closer to that dream becoming reality? Anthony Robbins talks about dreams are fun to talk about but when dreams are turned into goals they become possible. And when goals are turned into plans, they become real. I just want to share a real quick story, a real life story. Right here in Memphis, uh, one of our family friends from up in Henderson County, and they were farmers, and uh, nobody had a whole lot of money back, then, back there then, but we all were happy. And one of, our, one of the neighboring families was Karen Davis and her family. And uh, Karen Davis loved books. And she was a bookworm. <laughs> she and her friend Thelma Kidd. And so they had this little, little bookstore, just a little hole in the wall, really. And they had big dreams. They wanted to be. They wanted to have. Uh, they pictured in their minds this, which was seemed so fantastic back then, like a little coffee shop where people could come and eat, and they have all these books, and they'd be connected to the world and all that. And this little hole in the wall back in the 70s, they were like, that's not going to happen. But they had a dream, they had a goal, and they put it into action. They started looking for resources. They didn't have the money to build this out, but how many books did they buy from Ingram Bookstore out of Nashville, the big distributor, every month? They called, they kept talking to Ingram. Finally, Ingram said, you know what, we're going to help you guys. You are tenacious, we're going to help you. So Ingram Books financed this big dream that became Davis Kidd Bookstores, which y'all probably remember. Well, that's not the end of the story. So I want to I want to challenge you guys not to stop there, because Karen and both Elma uh, Kid and Karen Davis had more than just business dreams. They wanted to give back to the world. They wanted to leave a legacy behind that would help people, and they wanted to do it on a grand scale. And Karen wanted to live in Wales of all things. She wanted to live in Wales. So all this again, the second set seemed fantastic. So you know the rest of the story. Davis Kidd was a wild success. They sold, they took the money, and they did their exit strategy, which was the next level of their goal, was giving back to the world. Karen's living in Wales. A lot is her dream. She's living her dream. So I just want to say there are rags to riches stories, and you can do it. Whatever your dream is, you just have to do what we just talked about. You have to Put your dream on your board, a picture of it on your vision board. You have to make a goal out of it. Then you need to take action plans to get there. You can do it. So that's the motivational moment today. And now, <laughs> now I would like to introduce somebody that uh, we're so excited to have. Uh, Trevor, can you do the... Switch? Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I'm oh, I'm doing your presentation. <laughs> That's going to be interesting. <laughs> Why did you invite her? I know. I'm so, I'm so glad we're among friends. <laughs> that would be interesting, wouldn't it? All right, so Trevor, you're getting her presentation up. All right, so I've heard a lot about Terry and from uh, Mary Lou and some others, and so your name precedes you. It's all good. Terry has worked for over 30 years in the field of physical therapy as a physical therapy assistant. She holds a BA, an associate of physical therapy, is a certified personal trainer, certified kinesio taping practitioner, and certified essential oil coach. This is a lady to know. Terry is passionate about empowering others to take charge of their health. In 2016, she opened her business, Learning Health and Wellness, LLC where she teaches classes and you do workshops on various health and wellness topics. She has spoken to groups of various sizes, including 150 leadership nurses at Methodist Le Bonheur. She's been featured as the guest on Mary Beth Conley's show and has published in both Cypress Magazine and Bartlett Insights. Way to go, lady. In addition to speaking engagements, Terry also works with clients on a one-to-one -one basis to assist them in living healthier, happier lives. 
She's changing lives one drop and one application at a time. She specializes in oil protocols and kinesio taping applications. She has been married to her husband, Brent Mecklen, for over 30 years. Let's give her a hand for that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Brent and Terry are the proud parents of two sons. Joshua is a Shelby County fireman paramedic and Jonathan, a sergeant in the United States Marine Corps and is the chief, uh, crew chief of CH-53. Uh, contact Terry, of course. You can contact her after this, but right now I am so honored to have Terry Mecklen. Come on down, Terry. Okay, and um, is there a clicker to advance the yes? Perfect. No. Is that right? No, we don't have a clicker. No clicker. Well, All just right. give me a second. I'm gonna get out of my car. I didn't know you needed. Oh, you didn't. I have. I might have one in my car. Okay. If not, um, Carolyn volunteers. Okay. Carolyn volunteers. I'll try to <laughs> let her know. Yeah, she vol was voluntold. <laughs> I've never seen a volunteer go kicking and screaming. So thank you guys so much. I'm so excited to be here today. And several of you I already know. Um, and I've met some wonderful new people today. So um, we're going to be talking about minimizing stress during the holidays. Uh, can anyone identify with that? Is there any stress? <laughs> There's not even stress on a regular daily basis, right? Much less the holidays. So, go ahead and... so what are some of the causes of holiday stress? Relatives? Need I say more? <laughs> Number one, too busy or too lonely. Those are two sides of the coin. A lot of that has to do with um, holiday stress. How about money? I hear a lot with money issues during the holidays, and that comes in January when all those bills come rolling in, when people put it on their credit card instead of planning for it throughout the year. Um, and then what about unhealthy habits and lack of sleep? So we're gonna talk a little bit about each of these topics very quickly today, and I'm going to set a timer. Um, is there a clock or something where I can yes. at least? She's gonna give you so a I'll seven you minute, like three this. minute, and one minute. Perfect, okay. All right, so um, first let's talk about knowing your stressors. Let's go ahead and go to the next one, family time. All right, so know your <coughs> stressors. If it is family time, know what causes those stress with family. Is it that, crazy uncle you really don't want to sit next to and he gets you in the corner, then find and already have planned an exit plan or that I'm going to sit by this person this year. So know what your stressors are with family and think of how to mitigate that to begin with. Is it that you're only going to do one family function? Is it that you're only going to stay for X amount of time? And have that decided ahead of time and know what those plans are. Um, and have one to two action plans, not just one, <laughs> in case the first one fails. Um, so does that sound like that would be something that would help yeah, in mitigating right. some of that family that's stress? Good. That's right on. All right, let's go to the next one. So evaluate how you spend your time. We need to decide what the holidays we want it to look like. Um, it's not gonna be a hallmark, it's never perfect. So give yourself some grace, go ahead and know that um, this is what I want it to look like, and, and we know that it's, not always going to turn out that way. So don't try to be stressed about it has to be perfect. Perfect is what it is. And so be willing to go with that and um, um, then also time block. Wrong expectations. Wrong expectations, yeah. Find out, I mean, is what's something, one thing that you really, if, if this happened during the holidays, it would be amazing. And then kind of build things around that and make sure that you're doing things that are fun. All right, go ahead. So the next one about holidays can be a lonely time. Uh, sometimes you've had the death of the loved one and that's very difficult to manage and to deal with. The holidays just don't seem the same with the loss of them. Sometimes there's just mad, bad memories associated with um, the holidays. So figure out what those triggers are. Um, do you need to be around more people? Do you need to be out giving? When you are struggling because you're sad or you're lonely, the more you give, the more you actually get back. And that actually can help work with the endorphins in the brain. It actually works on a mental level as well. So getting out there and doing, finding somebody that can help you. And then always have a source that you can turn to and always know this is a time of the year where there's more strokes, there's more heart attacks, there are more suicides. 
And so being watchful for those around you so that you can see those triggers that maybe they're struggling. Reach out to those that um, seem like they're struggling during the holidays and see what you can do for them as well. And encourage them to get involved. All right, go ahead and go to the next one. Keep your expectations realistic. <laughs> so I know you're gonna love this one. Set a budget and stick to it. And that really needs to help or be started way earlier in the beginning of the year so that you already kind of have that planned. If you have your budget planned for the year, you're gonna know what you can afford for Christmas. Um, practice thankfulness. Um, be thankful for every moment. Are they going to turn out great necessarily? Maybe not, but you can. It's the way you think about it. So I talk a lot about neuroplasticity. Uh, we used to think that the brain could not adapt. We couldn't once something was said that was set. That is not true. You can actually change the way you think. When you think negative thoughts, you actually build neurons that produce more negative thinking. When you think in positive thoughts, you actually build new neurons that think more positive. So you can become a positive person, and you can become less stressed. That's a big part of the stress, is that negative thinking. So instead of worrying that something's going to happen, instead of, um, guy in front of you, stop short. Okay, we all get kind of frustrated at that. But instead of just harping on that and thinking about that, if you actually start thinking, Okay, then, you know, maybe they stopped because of something else. Or, you know, you try to put a positive thought on that, you're going to be surprised at how much more positive you are and how much less stressed you are. Same thing with the holidays. Instead of being frustrated or worrying about what's going to happen with family or what's going to happen with something else, be positive and think those positive thoughts. Stop yourself in your tracks. And then keep a journal of gratitude. Uh, science shows that if you're actually writing two to three things in the morning and at night that you're grateful for, that actually show a change in positive outlook and health. So it's very important to be grateful. And it can be just that it didn't rain today. You know, don't put down, my goodness, it's so cold, <laughs> so miserable. It's negative thinking. <laughs> Make something positive out, out of it. At least it's not freezing rain out there. I'm positive it's cold. Positive, it's, it's positively cold out there. All right, let's go to the next one. So what happens when we get too busy and overstressed? The brain's uh, prefrontal cortex goes into overdrive. And when that happens, we actually have decreased memory. How many of us need decreased memory? Hmm. We, don't, we don't need to help that, right? <laughs> so increased stress leads to decreased memory. It also um, causes new brain cells not to be generated and existing brain cells to die. So we need to handle that stress, right? We need to mitigate that stress. We also, when we're overstressed, we have gut health issues. We have more and more research is finding that when you are in stress, when we're in stress, that's fight or flight. And when we're in that flight or fight mode, the stomach and the gut actually slows down because it's putting all the energy to the muscles and to the brain. Well, what happens when we stay in that chronic state of stress? The gut continues to stay slow. We get something that's called leaky gut. When we have leaky gut, we're not getting the nutrients into the body that we need. When we don't get the nutrients that we need, the body doesn't function correctly. When the body doesn't function correctly, what happens? We don't, yeah, we get sick, we get diseases and all kinds of things. They're actually also now finding that an unhealthy gut, gut is leading to depression. That when you can fix that unhealthy gut, you can flip that depression. And so that's something that people really need to look at. Not all depression is caused by an unhealthy <coughs> gut, but they're finding more and more that that is the case, as well as other chronic um, issues, health issues that you have. So fix the gut, and a lot of times you can fix the health issue. All right, let's go to the next one. So some healthy habits. First, enjoy a few treats, but sugar is going to be one of the things that's going to lead to more stress and more health issues. So limiting it, don't we go crazy on sugar at this time of year? Because, you know, hey, it's a free-for-all. <laughs> but you're really actually going to be more miserable. Miserable. So figure out what your favorite thing is. Try to limit the amount of sweets and Cokes and, and sugary stuff. Um, really start weaning that out of your system. Find time to exercise. Uh, research is showing that just a brisk walk outside, especially we're lucky here, but we can get into nature. Um, even getting out into the woods for just an hour walk, is significant in decreasing your stress level. So find that time during this busy period. Um, it's, it's worth it. Get your Z's, get your sleep. 
when we're not getting our healthy sleep, we're actually having more health issues, more mental decline. So we need to get that sleep. That's the time that your body is actually repairing the cells in your body and making you healthy and renewing those cells. Make use of essential oils. That's one of the things that I do is I talk about essential oils. I was um, not interested when I was first introduced to essential oils and for eight months I was not interested. Um, and then I really did have a life-changing experience. And now it makes sense. Why use medications on a consistent, we go to it quickly, too quickly. There is a time and a place for medications. Um, you'll never hear me say there's not. However, if you've got a headache or some head tension, why do you want to jump into taking some Tylenol or Motrin when you can do a drop of peppermint on your head and get the same results? Um, there's no side effects, and so it makes a whole lot of sense. But there's a lot that you can do to alleviate stress with essential oils and other natural products, um, including um, improving your emotional and mental wellness, uh, reducing cravings. That's kind of nice during the holidays, be able to reduce those cravings so that you're not even really as tempted and improving your sleep and so much more. So there's a lot you can do with essential oils and natural products. Then also, uh, let's go to the next one. There's some easy tips to alleviating stress. And I wanted y'all, how much time do we have? We have about 10 minutes. Okay. I wanted to, if I can find it, pass this little bottle of wild orange around. And if you don't mind, would you grab this and open that and just pass, bless you, pass that around. Um, so I've got some hand sanitizer we use also, we'll pass that around in a minute. <laughs> so, so take a drop if you want, you can put a drop in your hand, and we're going to do a couple of stress reduction um, um, things real quick. So one drop of wild orange in your hand. First, I'm going to tell you what diaphragmatic breathing is. So diaphragmatic breathing, you're going to take a deep breath in through your nose. Hold it for a second. And then blow out like you're blowing a candle. Good. Go ahead and do that while this is being passed around. Go ahead and do a couple of those. Breathe in through your nose. Hold it for a second. Blow out like you're blowing a candle. How does that feel, just that? Did that not just kind of help any tension just kind of slip away a little bit more? So diaphragmatic breathing is extreme. She's already smelling the wild orange. <laughs> She's like, okay, stress is gone. <laughs> so, well, I just out here. It is, it is. And I'll tell you a little bit as this wild orange is coming around. It's one of my favorites. So wild orange actually helps decrease stress, but it helps increase energy. Aren't those two things that we need? Um, so it's a great oil. It's actually one that Vanderbilt Hospital used in their emergency room when they were testing. Vanderbilt Hospital uses their oils um, in their hospitals on all the nurses' floors and in the emergency room. But they did some testing on stress with the staff, um, ability to handle stress, um, several other things that they were working on. And um, the results were phenomenal. Uh, they went back and looked at those results at the later for their patient care they noticed that the blood pressures and requests for pain medication across the board were significantly down and so uh, this is one of my favorite favorite oils so as what we're going to do now is you're going to close your eyes you're going to cup your hands over your nose and mouth you're going to take a nice deep breath in and hold that and then blow out through your mouth like you're blowing out a candle and we're going to do that three times so just keep those eyes closed. We're going to breathe in deeply and blow out through your mouth. And one more time. Breathe in deeply through the nose and blow out like a candle. And how do you all feel? Oh, man. Summertime. <laughs> it doesn't even feel cold outside anymore, does it? <laughs> What's cold? <laughs> So those, those are a couple of things. Um, positive thinking, we already talked about that neuroplasticity. Y'all, I promise, talk, practice that. Anytime something negative happens, find something positive about it and repeat that <coughs> and talk about that and see if that doesn't change your outlook. Um, then journaling, um, we already talked about the journaling. And then mindless rest is another thing that you can practice. We don't have much time for rest during the holidays, but if you'll take just a couple of minutes and find a quiet place and get completely limp in the chair wherever you're sitting. Just relax every single muscle, close those eyes, and don't think about a thing. If a thought comes into your head, just let it breeze, just like a, the wind blowing it away. 
And every time something comes in, just focus on that breathing. Don't try to make that breathing do anything. Just let it, your chest rise and fall naturally and focus on that. And if you can do that for three to five minutes, you will notice immediately that stress level come down. All of these tips will help even with things like your blood pressure coming down. Because stress, what, what does stress do with your blood pressure? It majorly increases it, right? So we want to decrease strokes and heart attacks during this time of the year um, and stresses. So practice some very relaxing um, stress tips. All right, let's go to the next one. I do want to talk just for a second about essential oils since I did introduce those to you. Um, and I'll tell you why I use doTERRA essential oils. So I love research. That's what I love to do when I do physical therapy is really do a lot of research. Typically we have to have um, 20 CEU hours every two years. Typically um, in years past, up until this last couple of years, I um, generally do 100 to 120 hours a year instead of 20 every two. Um, because I love, I love learning, I love education, I love research. So research is important to me. Once I finally was willing to try an essential oil, then I thought, well, how do I know what oil? They're everywhere. I think you can probably find them in the gas stations. You can find them at every retail store out there. You can find them on the web. So how do I know which one? So I started doing my research, and I encourage you to do your research. The reason I ended up with doTERRA is a couple of things. One, I saw that they did use them as research um, at, in the Vanderbilt Hospital. Um, I noticed that other um, places were using them. We're in 140 <coughs> hospitals around the country. There's a cancer facility, Cancer Hospital in Cincinnati, that just opened a floor dedicated to doTERRA. Pla um, places are starting to integrate oils into um, patient care. And so that spoke a lot to me. If they're going to integrate this brand specifically, there must be something about them. Number two, I started seeing the research out there that almost everything on the market is actually synthetic, even though it says it's all natural, that it's organic, um, and it turns out that it's not when the researchers take a look at it and actually put it through the testing. The other thing, when you see an oil that says don't put on topically, or don't take internally, and it's something like lemon or lavender, that should be a huge red flag. <laughs> I'm a huge red flag. But what really pushed me over the top with doTERRA was the fact that there is a third party out there that tests different oil companies, and doTERRA is the only one that will allow them to put that information on the web for you to see. And so there's probably a reason nobody else will allow that information on their product out there. So that's what pushed me over the top with um, going with doTERRA. Um, I do encourage you to do your own work um, and research and come to your own conclusions. But for me, that spoke volumes. So um, because it is that time of year also with Christmas, another stress reduction is having somebody do your shopping for you. So that is another thing that I offer this time of the year. Why not give the gift of health that's actually a lot of fun also. So how many of you love the smell of that wild orange? Everyone. So um, what would somebody think if you gave them that for Christmas? Would that be a really cool gift and very inexpensive? Um, so what we like to do is to give the gift of health. There's actually some fun holiday gifts out right now. Those are only available until they're sold. But think about buying local. Think about um, coming to me and letting me help you with stress. Um, look at what some health issues are and come up with some fun um, ways to help you mitigate those issues, um, but also have some wonderful smells. So I have some other things if you guys want to smell them. Um, what other things would you like to know about stress? What did you learn today? What was your favorite takeaway? Most is self-inflicted. And most of it is self-inflicted, absolutely. And a lot of it has to do with family. Um, I was reading an article um, yesterday about a family. A guy was writing in asking for help. He said, "My, I'm getting married. My fiance's family wants me to take a family picture. And they do it every year. And I think it's time for her to say, hey, I'm now marrying this guy. I'm not doing family photos. And the, luckily, the person wrote back and went, um are you not wanting to be a part of this family? <laughs> you know, your may, last name may not be there. You can still do your own Christmas card. But stop and look at what those issues are. Is it really worth something fighting over and that cross to die on? 
Um, and reading that, I hope that when he reread that, that he realized that was kind of silly to be having the argument about. I don't want to be in your family photo because my last name is not Smith. Yeah. Well, you're becoming a part of that family. <laughs> so, yes, sir. I also learned from today that you have more control over your stress than you think. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. You have some control there. Some things you can't help, but how you react to what happens to you, you have control over. Very, very good. And that makes the huge difference because it is how you react. Um, we're not guaranteed anything throughout a day, but the more that we focus on a negative, um, how many of you feel like, and you may not want to raise your hand on this one, how many of you feel like you sometimes have a negative outlook when things go bad? Okay, so we do have some hands. And so I really, I would love to hear from y'all in a week. I would love for you for just this week to practice that. Every time something bad happens, go ahead and stomp your foot for a minute. It's okay to have that you know, burst of anger, but then immediately stop yourself and find something positive and work through that. And I would actually love to hear from y'all this week of how it changed and how your days actually went amazing because of it. Um, a number of years ago, I did the uh, seven-day, Emmett Fox seven-day positive thinking diet. <clears throat> and you're supposed to only do positive thoughts and if negative one comes in, you just change it into something positive. And I was doing great. I was feeling so good until my mother squashed it. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> but it really does work. It has. You know, in my Christian world, it's praise. Mm -hmm. That's another positive way of thinking. Hey, mm -hmm. you know, you got somebody else that's taking care of this as well. You're looking at it from one side of the view. There's right. a, it's a thin pancake that has only one side. So. You're right. You're right. And, and that, that thankfulness comes right back into that praise. You know, every time something good happens, Stop and say thank you. Um, you know, it's it's just being thankful for the things that are happening to us and finding that positive. Yeah, something good's going to come out of it. It will. It will. I just like to make a point. So yes. I, I mean, I totally agree with the positive uh, thinking. I was recently reading a book by Dan Pink, uh, "To Sell as Humans." So one of the thing that he mentions mm. is that research shows. That if you are thinking like 70% positive and 30% not negative but questioning the positivity, that brings you the best results in completing your goals. So not everything, like so if you fail, for example, so you will say, oh, I mean, if you're going into the negative thoughts palette, you'll say, you'll blame yourself and da 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 da. But basically, what made me fail on this one? And you, it's still like, you know, the, or if you're like trying to, for example, Okay, let me rephrase it. So, for example, if you're trying to achieve uh, uh, something, like, okay, I'll do great today. So, if you're just talking positive to you, you may not do great until you say, what may not make me do the great today? What can I do to make great today? And then, then it, it basically will go as planned. Absolutely, I love so, that. And so self-reflection on if something did go bad, absolutely, not just all of a sudden changing it to something positive, but reflecting on, okay, why did this happen? How can I make it better next time? Um, and getting those goals. And you're right, if you're setting goals, um, you've got to have that positive and, or, and that negative. And not assuming look. that it's going to go bad. Correct. I'm already in that direction. Correct. See, I told you it's going to go bad. <laughs> See, and, and actually that's building those negative neurons on each other. So, anyone else? I know we're just about out of time. I'll say one thing that, that I really like that you said that actually a friend of mine told me uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, about an issue that I was dealing with. He, he said, focus on, you know, there's people that you may not like, there's things that you don't, that, that happen that are in your mind negative. Focus on one thing, pick out one thing you like or you, you enjoy or that's are positive hard. about that yeah. and focus on that. Yeah. And then that way you think about the, the, the good side rather than the bad and that will change your outlook. Mm -hmm. It's so. just like you probably heard when um, somebody's hurt your feelings or somebody's done something really horrible to you. It's so easy to stay angry at them, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is the anger that people carry around. And when you can start to slowly let that go and every time that thought comes up into your brain about that person, because most of the time, they don't care. Mm -hmm. You're the one in prison, they they sleep, not them. They sleep well. They, they sleep know. well. You're the one drinking the arsenic, you know? So if you will, every time they come into your head, if you will stop and say, I'm not going there, and think about something else, and constantly do that, 
you'll find that after a while, it's no big deal. And so you've relieved a ton of stress. It drains your energy. Too. It drains your energy. And so, again, like you said, most stress is self-inflicted. So, yes, sir. Just one thing somebody said to me one time that really made a difference for me was control the controllables. You know, that's all you're responsible for. Control the controllables. You know, and it helps you focus on the things that you can do something about. I love that. Control the controllables. And then I would say don't focus on the negative. Identify it. Yeah. understand it and then move forward mm -hmm. um, my dad always says when he's making decisions he taught me growing up make a decision and then make that the best decision don't look back so move forward so thank you guys so much for today I appreciate it and um, you. call me if you have any questions or if you need your holiday gifts would love to help you thank have you. a great day so, if there's anything else, I want to look at this holiday thing this is really healthy stuff well I want to thank you guys for being at talk shop today Route the flyer since Lynn is not here. And next week again is the auction, so come early. Please call me or see Nita or me after talk shop. Call Lynn. Uh, our phone numbers are on here about your donation. And come and bid. You never know what you're going to get. Yeah, we can, we can give money. We're going to be auctioning off those uh, bags, and you guys are welcome to come to the event at Incredible Pizza. It will humble you but it will fill you with a positive joy. All right, so now the next part of our uh, program before we release you guys is your um, power gear. How many of y'all have filled out your power gear? All right, so now everybody knows who everybody is. I'm gonna ask that you guys connect with somebody before you leave and set up a good one-on-one -on -one or three-on-one coffee and build those relationships. Follow up on the coffees you've done last week, but make another one, bam, fam. Book a meeting from a meeting today. Do y'all have any any questions on anything that we've got going here? All right, so I'm not I'm not Troy McDonald, but I will try to do Troy McDonald. Let me hitch up my pants. <laughs> All right, as we say, every week after talk shop, class is dismissed.